Greetings. My name is Lori Shainsky. I'm a shamanic sound healer. And this is a presentation that I gave at a shamanic sound intensive that I hold here at Hidden Lake in Oregon, discussing the key components of shamanic sound healing. And I welcome you to explore this beautiful realm of sound plus intention plus spirit plus listening plus the open heart which leads to manifestation healing transformation creation and I welcome you I welcome you I welcome you as we explore this equation of the key ingredients of shamanic sound healing. This work really emerged uh, from my work from Tom Kenyon. Actually, I'm going to show you. He had this great equation where, and he kept finding this out in all these different circumstances where he was doing research, that sound plus intention equals healing. And Jonathan Goldman also had this great um, equation, very similar, where he said visualization plus vocalization equals manifestation. And it was really interesting when I was working with Tom, who I worked with for a couple of years, and then I went and saw Jonathan uh, for a long, intensive, um, about four years ago. Anyway, I could tell that they were working with spirits, but they really didn't talk about their process um, and how they were incorporating their spirits and so forth. And so as I began to sit and start to blend the sound healing work with them, with my um, years of shamanic training with Jan and Michael Harner and so forth, this other equation emerged. And so I have incorporated a few things here and there over the, um, over the years. And the first part of the equation was really sound plus spirit plus intention. That spirit is a super important component in the sound healing equation, in the sound healing process. And so, um, and that is really at the root of shamanic sound healing. It's incorporating and asking for that divine assistance in holding, framing and holding an intention and then transmitting sound. And we're also gonna be very attuned to the receiving of sound. And um, that's a lot of what we're focused on this weekend. And then it became really important that we begin to consider listening as a part of the equation, like listening to the spirits and the open heart. And that all of these five things and these instead of plus signs are probably multipliers, that these are the components that lead to manifestation and transformation and creation. Oops. Sorry about that. And so when we just think about and feel into this idea of sound, Tom said it really well. He said, you know, sound is a carrier wave of intention. It's a carrier wave of spiritual power and divine information and the thought forms and insights and the feelings and emotions that get encoded in the sound that we make, 
especially in my work. And spirit, of course, you all are very familiar with how potent it is when humans and spirits team up in a partnership. And really, the whole idea of spirit as central to shamanism holds that we have a worldview and a belief system where we know that we are in partnership with these unseen and seen beings and that they are all collaborating and supporting us and orchestrating our livingness, our lives. And intention, it's like, I really, it, it started out kind of as a mental construct, but it's really the yearning. It's like, what is it that we yearn for? And that those yearnings get encoded into the sound and into our invocations and prayers that we visualize what it is that we feel and yearn for, what we want, what's needed, and that we work with sound and spirit to broadcast the feelingness of those yearnings of that desired state that we are seeking to manifest. And our intentions are usually supported by language when we speak into our bowls or out in our, into our in, invoking space, or as we gather with another to do a healing, that we're speaking into the sacred and using language to paint a picture of the desired state that we're seeking to set into motion. And really, it is a scene in the dark with our heart. That yearning comes from the heart. And the more heartfelt the intention and the more feelings we have around that intention, the easier the universe has in delivering and bringing and sending the fruition, the creation, the manifested states of our intentions. And today and tomorrow in particular, we're going to be really looking at this listening piece. We're listening with our whole bodies. We are in this receivership of divine information, of things that we're, we're hearing from each other. We're paying attention to vibration of all types. And in the listening and in this concept of receptivity, we're asking to cultivate a discernment and we're asking for the spirits to be involved in this mediation of energies that are coming and going as sound into our spaces, into our bodies, into the solar system, which I will talk about at some point this weekend, that we have a network of physicality to perceive and focus on and listen to. and the open heart. This is really getting at the core, the focus of why we're actually doing all this work in these divine realms. And the open heart as this focal point or this portal of the flow of love in and out receiving, transmitting, that our hearts are active 
in participating in this exchange and really you know we go through a lot of um energy to set up an altar and light a candle and put things icons and physical objects that that anchor our metaphysical helpers and really the true altar is the open heart we may in our minds perceive our altars as being that place that portal of coming and going of sending and receiving but truly it's the open heart that's the true portal for the coming and going of spiritual energies and this is really good news because we are out in the world frequently well maybe less frequently but we're out there and if we have our heart and we have our voice we can do the most potent shamanic sound healing without the need of all of our stuff and it's really important to to find that you have that capacity or to cultivate that capacity and so the equal sign in the equation we're using these blending these ingredients sound spirit listening the open heart intention to inspire to set into motion to magically produce to imagine to experience a becoming or unfolding into a manifested state a feeling a beingness a doing contemplated experienced that that we have this manifested state in our minds in our hearts in our feelingness that we are seeking to set into motion with those five ingredients on the left side of the equation and this manifested state can also be visualized in very basic um, terms as a matrix of energy and matter of a circumstance of a life situation and we're asking for sound and intention and spirit to get into those matrices of energy and matter to make a shift to change to inspire a new state of transforming on an ongoing basis and maybe just like that something changes and there's your butterflies peggy <laughs> And we're really we're yearning to transform into a new vibrational frequency a new set of beliefs and ways of looking at the world a new story that we can write about ourselves and our relationship with the world there's there's cindy's uh oh hey Cindy's dolphin and Sarah's mermaid and other lovely animals there and we're really creating we are creator beings and in this process of creating using our sound our voice prayer intention our partnership with the spirits we're really asking in a healing to visualize what we want feel what we want and then remove any obstacles or hindrances or obscurations to that desired manifested state and we call in sources of support divine frequencies 
to weave that new dream, to weave that new story, to bring about that new created state. And in my world, in the process of doing this, our mission together is really to have fun, to enjoy an ascension in our vibration and in our illumination, to contribute to the evolution of our souls. I mean, that's really what we're doing here, if you believe that, on the planet. To be of service to self and others and earth. To live an uplifted life. To, tra to crack a good joke and to just be. And we use intentional spirit-guided sound in a loving community and in our communion with the divine. And, and we just say thank you. And we sink into that knowingness and let that permeate into our being as the truth. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the wise ones that spoke through me to my teachers, Jan Inglesmith, Tom Kenyon, Jonathan Goldman, as well as Tom Cowan, Bradford Keeney, Betsy Bergstrom, Buck and Paul Ghost Horse, Susie Tucker, Francesca Mason Boring, and we say thank you to all our teachers that bring us to a new state.